Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into your weekly dose of NFL. OMG, guys, it is week one. It is here. Let's get right into it. I'm going to be reacting to a bunch of crap. The first thing, though, I had to screenshot this. Dan Orlowski. 17-0 is a realistic goal for Tom Brady and the Bucks. Oh, my goodness. Now, my first reaction to this, there's no way he truly believes that. Tom Brady is 43 years old. What did they go, 11-5 last year? I understand everyone loves the Buccaneers defense. They have a really good offense. Tom Brady's the GOAT. I'm not disputing that. But I want to sit here and make a bet with someone right now. If anyone out there wants to bet me, I will bet anyone that the Buccaneers, not only will they not win the Super Bowl, I don't think they're making it back to the Super Bowl. People, people totally underestimate how ridiculously hard it is to repeat in the NFL. This time last year, everybody and their mom we're saying that the Chiefs were going to win the Super Bowl again. It is so hard, not let alone be 43 years old, to repeat as a Super Bowl champion. It's not happening this year. The idea that they're going to go 17 and 0, I don't think I don't even think they're going to be the number 1 seed in the NFC. I really don't, guys. I, I, so there's no somebody Orlowski, He's too smart for that. There's no way. You somebody on ESPN has to be telling him, "Oh, go say something crazy to get people riled up," because there's no way. NFL hot takes for the 2021 season. Calvin Ridley has 1,800 plus receiving yards and wins Offensive Player of the Year while establishing himself as a top five receiver. That could definitely happen with the loss of Julio. Uh, Justin Herbert takes a sophomore leap and wins MVP. I don't think that's happening. Austin Eckler finishes the season as a top three fantasy running back. That's kind of a stretch right now. Yeah, that's kind of a stretch. The hamstring injury. Dak Prescott finishes top three in MVP voting. That could certainly happen. The Colts win 12 games and make it to the AFC Championship game. That's a bold prediction. The Colts have a really well-run organization. They really do. I don't see that happening with Carson Wentz, but I, I like the way this dude's thinking. I like the way he's thinking. Jameis Winston plays good despite a mediocre supporting cast and has a 32-13 to 13 TD to interception ratio. That is oddly specific. Mac Jones has a great season as he wins Offensive Rookie of the Year and leads the Patriots to the playoffs. That could certainly happen, although his weapons aren't the best. The Seahawks finished last in the NFC West. That could certainly happen. And that's really not because the Seahawks are really that bad. The NFC West with the 49ers, you know, health now healthy, is completely stacked this year, ladies and gentlemen. The NFC West is a it's a it's a bloodbath. Top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. So this is according to four different dudes. They all have Mahomes 1, Aaron Rodgers 2, uh, Russell Wilson 3, according to most, to three of them. And then there's Brady. I would say, yeah, Mahomes is clear cut the best. Then Rodgers. I might actually put Josh Allen at number 3. Uh, and then Russell Wilson maybe 4. Uh, there's Dak there at number six and seven. Uh, Justin Herbert already making up an appearance inside the top ten. Kyler Murray sitting right around that nine or ten range. How about uh, Ryan Tannehill? He really he is an underrated quarterback. There's Lamar around six or seven. I think those rankings are done pretty good. But I would probably put at this point Josh Allen third. Uh, Russell Wilson would probably be fourth. It's so tough to rank Brady because he's old. He still's really good. I understand that, but he's just so old and not mobile at this point. Offense versus defensive scale. So I really don't think this is based on anything. Obviously, if you're in the upper right quadrant, those are going to be the elite teams, meaning you're really good at offense and really good at defense. They have the Buccaneers up there. Uh, they have the Chiefs really good at offense, not so good at defense. They have the Steelers really good at defense, but really bad at offense. And there you can see at in the bottom left, the Houston Texans, the worst offense and the worst defense. I thought that was just a little fun thing. You guys can find your own team there. Uh, predicting the top five stat leaders and everything. So passing yards. I was I remember looking at this and I actually think any one of those guys could lead the league in passing yards. Probably definitely Dak with the weapons he has. Mahomes has really good weapons. Stafford now with McVay. He's got two really good quality receivers. Rodgers. I I'm not feeling Aaron Rodgers this year. I just uh, he, he won the MVP last year. I understand that. I think Aaron Rodgers is perhaps the most talented quarterback to ever play in the NFL. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm just not feeling it this year. I think once he gets to a new team next year, preferably the Broncos, the Denver Broncos, watch out for them with Aaron Rodgers. 
once he gets to a new team, once he est- gets established. I'm just, this year, I don't know. I, I, something's off with Aaron Rodgers this year, you guys. Passing touchdowns, they have Rodgers leading it. I think Mahomes is the, is the best safe bet to lead in t- passing touchdowns this year. Russell Wilson, he's always near the top. Brady, he's got really good weapons. And Tannehill, Tannehill's really underrated. Rushing yards, Nick Chubb, no way. Not with Kareem Hunt there. He's not. He he could lead. He could average like five or five and a half yards a carry and still not lead in rushing just because they have Kareem Hunt, Henry. He's always going to be near the near the top. Dalvin Cook as long as he doesn't get hurt. How about Zeke making a top five uh, and then rushing touchdowns? See, this is what I didn't understand. They have Derrick Henry leading the league in rushing yards, but not even top five in rushing touchdowns. Guys, Antonio Gibson. I hope you didn't draft him in your fantasy drafts. I think he's going to be a complete bust this year. Uh, Dalvin Cook should be fine. Camara rushing touchdowns? I don't know about that. Maybe Tony Jones Jones Jr. Uh, and then Aaron Jones. Receptions, Stefan Diggs. As long as Josh Allen doesn't regress, he'll be fine. Pretty much like all the top receivers, Adams, Hopkins, Ridley, Cooper Cup in receptions? Maybe. Yeah, Cooper Cup kind of is a possession receiver, but he Cooper Cup's underrated. Uh, receiving yards, Devontae. Receiving touchdowns, Devontae. A guy that I actually think is becoming underrated because everyone was talking about him and now everyone kind of hates on him, DK Metcalf. Uh, that dude is a physical beast. I think he's the best young receiver in the NFL. It's either him or Justin Jefferson. It's so close right now. I love DK Metcalf. Justin, Guys, Justin Jefferson is a beast, but DK Metcalf physical specimen who everyone's kind of underrating because they thought he was overrated. It's kind of a weird thing. Best players of all time. It's great to see Jim Brown number two on this list. Jer- Guys, if you haven't looked at Jerry Rice's career stats, the longevity Jerry Rice had, he's definitely a, at least a top four or three player in NFL history. His stats are crazy. But you guys can just look at some of the top 50, you know, according to The Athletic. Oh, wow, this is actually according to The Athletic. So Dan Marino, 18th, Aaron Rodgers, 21. I wonder if Aaron Rodgers gets another ring, how high that would raise him. Aaron Donald already 24. That's kind of surprising, although Aaron Donald over J.J. Watt. Didn't J.J. Watt win three Defensive Player of the Year awards in a row? I think he did. Drew Brees at 43 is kind of surprising due to all the records that he has. Okay, so here it actually is, the last 10 NFL Defensive Player of the Year awards. Uh, J.J. Watt won three of them. He didn't win three in a row. He won three in the span of four years. And Aaron Donald. So two guys have won six of the last 10 Defensive Player of the Year awards. How about Stephon Gilmore, a DB winning Defensive Player of the Year? That's impressive. Khalil Mack when he was on the Raiders. Luke Kinkley and Terrell Suggs. That was probably back in 2011. Uh... AFC seeding predictions. So this is a pretty neat graph put together. It kind of tells you what everyone think, what you know, different people think of these teams. You've got the consensus one and two overall seeds as Kansas City and Buffalo. Uh, kind of an interesting mix with the three and four overall seeds. Most people picking the Ravens over the Browns. I've seen a lot of people actually picking the Browns over the Ravens. So that's kind of interesting to see. Most people here have the AFC North going to the Browns. This one person has, I believe the Steelers making the playoffs. The Colts are in there a little bit sprinkled in there. There's a lot of teams. And then you look at the bottom. Wow, I'm surprised someone actually has Jacksonville finishing dead last. I would pick probably Jacksonville as the Probably 14th. I don't think they're going to be horrific. Houston, I think, is going to get the number one overall pick. Yeah. So most of them have Houston. All of them except one. And then there's the Jets finishing that low. I don't think the Raiders are really that bad, but it's it's tough. The Bron- I think the Broncos could be a surprise team. They're going to be limited a little bit by the QB play. But that's just an interesting graph to show you what everyone thinks. You can take a look at this dude's uh, predictions for week one. Lot of close games. I quickly want to say this. I think this is going to be a terrible betting week for the general public. I looked at these spreads and how close they are. Week one, normally you can find some good spreads. I think Schefter or uh, Ian Rappaport is going to be tweeting on Monday or Tuesday how badly Vegas beat the general public this week. I just think the the spreads are so close, I hate them. I think the public is going to get crushed. I am not betting this week. Uh, A lot of close games. How about Washington over the Chargers? Washington has a really good defense. Uh, Indianapolis and Seattle. Seattle always plays close games. Uh, Indy by one there. Here are some other games. I do think the Browns cover the six-point spread personally. Uh, Packers scoring 35 points. I mean, I could see it, you know, with the the way this day and age the offenses are. 
Uh, Trevor Lawrence winning his first start. That's a really good game for Trevor Lawrence, facing a, a really bad Houston team for, for your first start. Here's some more games. That is going to be a low-scoring game, the Denver game. Denver has a really good defense, 21-14. to I could see it. The Monday night game should be really good. I think Buffalo could easily handle Pittsburgh personally. Like, I think Buffalo could blow out Pittsburgh. I don't know if they're going to do it. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to be that bad. They have a good defense, but I could see it. Um, also, with Andy Dalton starting... I don't know if I don't know if Chicago gets to 20 points. I really don't. They're going to need to generate a defensive touchdown to get to 20 points. Honestly, uh, top 10 players in the NFC South for this season. So I wanted to say I know we all hate Michael Thomas, but I think it's kind of ridiculous not having him at least in, in the top 10 here. Like I understand people hate Michael Thomas. He's a prima donna. He's a diva. He's a diva receiver. But really, you're not going to have him as a top 10 player in the NFC South, maybe because he's injured? I just thought that was a little ridiculous. So this is the NFC side of the seeding. The full consensus, the Buccaneers get the number one overall seed. I don't see the Bucs getting the number one overall seed personally. I, they'll definitely make the playoffs. They'll win their division. I don't see them getting the number one overall seed. I think the Rams. Uh, Matt Stafford is my dark horse um MVP candidate. I think the storyline is perfect. He's been with his, a bad franchise his entire career. He finally gets a good offensive-minded coach. He's got good receiving weapons. He's got a good offensive line. He's got a good defense. They win 12 or 13 games. He throws a bunch of touchdown passes. I could see LA, you know, getting the number one overall seed. Uh, interesting. Look at the split opinions on Dallas. Look at the, you know, Dallas's logo and some people have him as a four. Some people have him missing the playoffs. One dude has them as an 11th seed in the NFC. And there you can see Detroit last, <laughs> except one dude has him 14th randomly. There's no way the Eagles finish last. No way. I think that's a little bit ridiculous. I think the Eagles are on the up and up. Uh, we'll have to see how good, what kind of step Jalen Hurts takes this year. But they definitely have a roster that they're building that Devontae Smith pick. Think about what the Eagles did. They traded down, got another first-round pick, and still got a superstar receiver in Devontae Smith. That was a phenomenal draft for the Eagles. They have, I think, three first-round picks next year. Really good job. So these are just some overall uh, award predictions. This person did a really good job. Really, I mean, Josh Allen could very easily win the MVP. Stafford definitely could win Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett hasn't won one of those. The storyline is there for that. Offensive Rookie of the Year, we know Trevor Lawrence is starting Week 1, although Mac Jones is becoming a hot commodity for Offensive Rookie of the Year. We know Micah Parsons is going to play a ton. He's going to get a lot of tackles, a lot of counting sets. Although Defensive Rookie of the Year is kind of wide open. Comeback Player of the Year could very easily be Dak. And then Coach of the Year, Brian Flores. I love that pick with an improving and young uh, Miami Dolphins team. I expect Tua to take a massive step in year two of his development. Who will win the MVP this year? So these are the overall odds. I think Matthew Stafford, again, has great value here, plus 2,000. Mahomes is going to lead it. Rodgers, I highly doubt, is going to be able to win back-to-back -back MVPs. It's going to be so tough. Uh, there's Josh Allen. I'm surprised Rodgers' odds are better than Josh Allen. I know he won MVP last year, but winning back-to-back -back is so tough. Brady, I don't see it. Not, I just don't see it. Dak Prescott, it's going to be tough. And how about Kyler Murray maybe as another dark horse plus 2,500? Really, Herbert, I don't, like, I'm not buying Herbert's going to have a sophomore slump, but that would be a massive leap to win the MVP. Uh, Kyler Murray and Stafford, I think, are the best uh, value plays there. These are just overall Super Bowl chances. I found this interesting. Kansas City and Tampa Bay, basically identical. Obviously, they both played in the Super Bowl last year. Kansas City, 15.3%. Tampa Bay, 15.2%, and then two AFC teams, Buffalo and Baltimore, then Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle, Los Angeles, Indianapolis over Cleveland? I understand Indianapolis has a good offensive line, but uh, I do not agree with that at all. Tennessee, Pittsburgh over San Francisco? I guess it's the, the, the unknowingness with the quarterback with San Francisco. It's going to be interesting to see how Kyle Shanahan handles that quarterback situation. It seems like they're ready to start Trey Lance. Now, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. They're going to give Jimmy G a few games. Week one, I know they face Detroit. Could be a good you know spot for Jimmy G to get some confidence. But it'll be really interesting to see how a quarterback guru like Kyle Shanahan handles a raw rookie like Trey Lance, who's really athletic, really mobile. That should be really interesting to see. 
Top 10 running backs in the NFL. Uh, they all have Derrick Henry first, McCaffrey second. I would probably go McCaffrey first, Derrick Henry second, but I could understand maybe the injury concerns with McCaffrey. Uh, Kamara and Cook both third and fourth. Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb is a beast. When you're talking about overall talent, I've said this for a while now, Saquon Barkley is the most talented running back in the NFL, but he does have major injury concerns. Aaron Jones, a little bit overrated. I think Aaron Jones is a little bit overrated. How about the one dude, Frank, not even having Zeke in the top 10? That's disrespectful, Zeke, man. Zeke is aged so poorly. I hope Zeke, guys, I'm an Ohio State fan. I love Zeke. I hope he has a good year, but it has been such a weird career. He's almost like he's washed. He's like 27 years old. He's like washed right now. It's crazy. Please, Zeke. Come back. Have a good year. Show some burst. Hopefully, he lost some weight. Maybe he got some good workouts in. NFL debate answers. Uh, George Kittle over Kelsey? No. I know Kittle's a better blocker. I understand that. He's Kittle's also a good pass catcher, but no. CMC over Derrick Henry? I can see that. Devontae Adams over Hopkins? I agree. AJ Brown over DK, I disagree with that. And then DK over Terry McLaurin. I love Terry McLaurin, but yeah, DK's better. And then Josh Allen over Lamar, I would probably agree with that. Although I do like Lamar. Lamar gets a lot of hate. You know, the only problem with Lamar is he runs a lot, and that could maybe create an injury. Uh, but Josh Allen runs too. But Josh Allen's also a bit bigger bodied guy. It'll be interesting to see if Josh Allen can, can carry the success after that breakout year he had last year. NFL players most likely to be traded this season. Uh, Deshaun Watson is not getting traded until next offseason. I know that for a fact. Stephon, did the Patriots change their logo? Has that is that their new primary logo? I don't think that's the new primary logo. Stephon Gilmore possibly getting traded. I could see it, honestly. Landon Collins, maybe. Zach, yes, please trade Zach Ertz. Free Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard, I want Dallas Goddard to get all the targets, please. He is so much better at this point in his career than Zach Ertz is. It's not even funny. He needs all the target share. Jalen Hurts should just be throwing him. Chandler Jones, maybe. They have J.J. Watt now. They probably are going to go for the play, you know, try and make the playoffs. They're probably going to be in contention, so I don't think so. David Njoku, I hope David Njoku becomes the tight end number one in Cleveland. He's a physical specimen. I'm a Browns fan, and I'll be the first to say... Folks, Austin Hooper is genuinely horrific. He is a horrific player. I think the Browns gave him a four-year, you know, $42 million contract, so it's not a good contract, so they're probably going to have to play Hooper. But if, if Ninjoke, it always comes down to, can he catch? He is a physical beast. He did really well in the playoffs last year. I'm excited. Hopefully Ninjoku gets more run. C.J. Mosley, yeah, I could see them trading him. I think they have him under a massively bad contract, the Jets do. And then Michael Thomas, due to, you know, we know obviously he's had issues with the New Orleans Saints front office. In your opinion, who is the best offensive player in history? It's got to be either Jim Brown or Jerry Rice. I would probably go Jerry Rice. Um, I also love Peyton Manning. I have a soft spot. You know, we all have a soft spot for one of the all-time great quarterbacks. Some people love Tom Brady. Some people love Drew Brees. Some people love, you know, Dan Marino. My guy is Peyton Manning. I love Peyton Manning. I have never seen a quarterback have a better offensive season than Peyton Manning did in 2013 with the Broncos. Go look it up. I think 55 touchdown passes with Julius Thomas. With Demarius Thomas, Eric Decker, Wes Welker. You guys remember that offense? No Sean Moreno as the running back. I loved that offense. Randy Moss was a beast as well. Yeah, but dude, Jerry Rice's numbers. Oh my God. Jerry Rice was crazy. Before there was a Chiefs dynasty, there was Jamal Charles. Oh man, Jamal Charles was such a beast. I remember Jamal Charles always being like a top three or four overall pick in fantasy drafts back in like 2011. Him and Matt Forte and Arian Foster, you guys remember that? But look at the score of this game, 56 to 31. That's a fun game. That is a fun game. And then guys, to end it off, the graphic, the NFL is back. What more needs to be said? Ladies and gentlemen, it is week one. Oh, I'm fired up, guys. So many good games. I did a preview video kind of earlier today talking about all the week one games. If you guys want to check that out, that is going to do it for this edition of your weekly dose of NFL. Enjoy the games this week, guys. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.